Hello viewers, this video is about muscle spindle. Before proceeding to the mechanism, how the muscle spindle works let's have a little basic introduction. Proper control of muscle function requires not only excitation of the muscle by spinal cord anterior motor neurons, but also continuous feedback of sensory information from each muscle to the spinal cord, indicating the functional status of each muscle at each instant. That is, what is the length of the muscle, what is its instantaneous tension, and how rapidly is its length or tension changing? To provide this information, the muscles and their tendons are supplied abundantly with two special types of sensory receptors. One muscle spindles, which are distributed throughout the belly of the muscle and send information to the nervous system about muscle length or rate of change of length. And, second is Golgi tendon organs, which are located in the muscle tendons and transmit information about tendon tension or rate of change of tension. The signals from these two receptors are either entirely or almost entirely for the purpose of intrinsic muscle control. They operate almost completely at a subconscious level. Even so, they transmit tremendous amounts of information not only to the spinal cord but also to the cerebellum and even to the cerebral cortex, helping each of these portions of the nervous system function to control muscle contraction. Muscle spindle is a small encapsulated spindle-like or fusiform shaped structure located within the fleshy part of the muscle. In a enlarged view we will see the structures in this capsule. Muscle spindle has 3 to 12 tiny intrafusal muscle fibers in this capsule. This capsule is attached to the ends of muscle to tendons and the intrafusal fibers are attached to the extrafusal fibers with the glycocalyx. This capsule has two type of intrafusal fibers, the nuclear chain fibers and nuclear bag fibers. Nuclear bag fibers are of two types, Dynamic nuclear bag fibers and static nuclear bag fibers. Each muscle spindle contains two to three nuclear bag fibers and five nuclear chain fibers. There are three types of intrafusal fibers. Dynamic nuclear bag fibers. Static nuclear bag fibers. Nuclear chain fibers. First A fibers are of 12 to 20 micrometer. Myelinated. Sensitive to muscle length and rate change of length. A single first afferent fiber innervate all three type of fibers to form primary sensory or angulospinal ending. Second fibers are of 6 to 12 micrometer, myelinated, little rate sensitive. Group second fiber innervate nuclear chain and static bag fibers to form secondary sensory ending. First A and second fibers are afferent axons. When the receptor portion of the muscle spindle is stretched slowly, the number of impulses transmitted from both the primary and the secondary endings is called static response, which creates static stretch reflex. When the length of the spindle receptor increases suddenly, the primary ending, but not the secondary ending, is stimulated powerfully is called dynamic response, which creates dynamic stretch reflex. These are dynamic gamma and static gamma motor neurons. The activity of the gamma motor neuron is influenced by cerebral cortex via excitatory reticular formation of pons and inhibitory reticular formation of the medulla. Among these excitatory reticular formation predominate over inhibitory reticular formation and signals are sent to the game motor neuron via reticulospinal fibers. As the signals are reached to the gamma motor neuron, miniature contraction at the polar end creates the central portion to stretch. The signal generated are carried via first A to the alpha motor neuron and the ventral root as a result there is contraction of the muscle. Vestibular nuclei also stimulate the alpha motor neuron. Flexor alpha motor neuron are stimulated by corticospinal fibers and rebrospinal fibers via red nuclei. When the hammer is striked to the patella tendon this type of graph is obtained between time and muscle length. Signals from the spinal cord are often transmitted to a muscle in an unsmooth form increasing or decreasing. Curve A graphically demonstrates the damping mechanism's ability to smooth muscle contractions, even though the primary input signals to the muscle motor system may themselves be jerky. This effect can also be called a signal averaging function of the muscle spindle reflex. Effect of various conditions on muscle spindle discharge. When the whole muscle is stretched, the muscle spindle is also stretched and its sensory endings are activated at a frequency proportional to the degree of stretching. It is called loading the spindle. Spindle afferents stop firing when the muscle contracts. It is called unloading the spindle. Stimulation of gamma motor neurons cause the contractile ends of the intrafusal fibers to shorten. This stretches the nuclear bag region, initiating impulses in sensory fibers. 
If the whole muscle is stretched during stimulation of the gamma motor neurons, the rate of discharge in sensory fibers is further increased. Dear viewers, kindly subscribe my YouTube channel named as Jatendra Shekhar for more videos, and don't forget to like, share and comment. Thanks for watching.